This is a um, reaction video to Tom McDonald, Nova Rockefeller, and Brandon Hart's new release, Heart Emojis. I was born on Valentine's Day. Like I said, I was born on Valentine's Day, and I grew up with hearts, <laughs> which is which is kind of um, ironic because I was I grew up as a foster child, and uh, uh, my the first eight years of my life I was in and out of foster homes, and uh, that's all I knew. But one one um, constant that I can remember from my childhood was that no matter the foster home or the group home or the intermediate place between homes or whatever what hallway whatever it was when my birthday came along whoever it was made certain that my cake or whatever it was had a heart or was in the shape of a heart or something in that manner and I was like <laughs> my life couldn't have been more further from warmth and from love but that was one thing that was constant in my early childhood life was a heart because of my birthday <laughs> Nothing else. No other, no other hearts came to me, but that, I always had those hearts. Oh, Jesus is just I left me. the stove on, so there's food for you to eat that I hope you choke on. This is just and the, And I wash uh, your clothes with bleach. I left my phone on. Before I, I left, I cracked your screen. I have to turn it and stop this again. I thought this was the actual video. This is just, it seems to me like it's just the lyric video. <laughs> I'll do this one and I'll do the other one as well. Let's start again. So there's nothing to watch except the stills that they have there. So let's just listen to music. This is old, old school listening to music before videos ever existed. So I'm going to judge the song just by the music. Great beginning. I left the stove on, so there's food for you to eat that I hope you choke on. <laughs> and I wash your clothes with bleach. I left my phone on. Okay. <laughs> it sounds, I thought it was, you know, very nice and mellow and very, uh, you know, like a, a ballad. <laughs> He's not saying exactly nice things, is he? No. He's, uh, sounds like my ex. She left thumbtacks on the spiral stairs down from the loft before she left so that I would, you know what? <laughs> Mind you, I threw, all, threw, threw out all her shit from the top out, the top the, from the loft off the balcony into the middle of the, you know, the outside in the middle of winter and it was the Yukon, so it was minus 40. So her leaving thumbtacks on the stairs or on the spiral stairs before she left while she went and called her friend and got all her crap off the front lawn into her car. I'm a horrible, I was a horrible person, but I mean, that's the memory it brings back. Sorry. On, before I left, I cracked your screen and I left a note on my Twitter you should read. It says, I'm not sorry for the things I said. You know, you deserved it. All the times you wish that I was dead. You made me feel worthless. I'm not sorry for the way I was. And I hope. See, this is going to be hard for other people to watch because, well, me, but uh, there's no, uh, there's nothing going on here. So uh, I, I'm going to have to keep talking throughout it just to make it interesting. You're hurting, now I know that I was just in love with a shitty person. Sick and tired of being sick and God, do I know that? Do I know that? Believe me, I, I know Mrs. Wrong, and I have, I've only known Mrs. Wrong, and uh, that's why I'm alone now. I just uh, don't want to. I'm tired of your bullshit. The cash I blew on you would have put diamonds on my whole wrist. Honestly, I'm glad that it's over. I hated your friends. I'm happy that I made you my ex. Yeah. I've been waiting to delete your number out of my phone. I know it's you if the color's unknown. You got a short fuse, and I don't need those explosions. I ain't gonna play with your teenage emotions. Welcome to the end. Whoa, the best of left again. Oh, I'm not yours. You don't know me no more. 
it's amazing when you're in a relationship, especially, you know, I, I, in a passionate relationship. I've been in one specifically that, I, that comes to mind. How much you can lust and love. Well, that's what it is. It, you get confused between lust and love. And uh, you keep on coming back and you think it's love, but it's not. It's lust. It's, you know, you're in a relationship. It's a volatile relationship. And you, you, you argue, you scrap, and you, you, you fall apart. And then, you know, a week later, you, you want to come back. It's not love. It's your cock or it's your cunt. Excuse the uh, expression. But it ain't love. It's lust. You, you're, you, you got a, a full sack and you want to. You want to unload it, and she's uh, she's uh, whatever reciprocal on her part. I, I don't want to speak for a woman, but and I don't want to come off too crass as I'm already. But it ain't love; it's lust, and most relationships is based on on lust. The initial fuck, and the, you wanting to continue that fuck, and then the ability to have a fuck there for you. And on, on the other part, sometimes it's you know, well, he's got money or she's got money, so I'm going to continue with that, and then the uh, you know, the the more time you spend with anyone or anything, there's a uh, there's a, a codependence that develops, and that's how relationships begin. Okay, there is love at first sight, but it's it's lust. Okay, it's not love, it's lust. But let's not confuse the two things. Lust is a much more prevalent than most people would fucking think. True love, love in its godly sense. I hate the word godly, but in that sense is above all this crass. It's how I feel about my, my gang gang, my cats. I love them to death. When I see them, I smile, I'm happy. Any mother with her child makes her smile. Whatever it is in your life that makes you smile, that's what you love. That's what you need to care for, okay? Everything else is crap. It's here today, gone tomorrow. Keep what makes you smile. Everything else is fuck, okay? And I've lost track, whatever, where I was going. But thank you, Tom. You evoked a thought in me. Good morning, guys. If I were you, then I would probably go ghost. How's it feel to never, ever let go? Yo, you think you're a snack, but I'd rather have chips. You think making a voodoo doll's gonna make you a witch. You think grabbing on a man's gonna make you rich. And you ain't cute enough to act like a bitch. Bitch, you're stock of vibes. I should have known by your eyes, girl. You know, you know what I can relate to both Tom and Brandon, and probably uh, Nova as well, is that uh, it's a Canadian thing. I honestly got, I think it's a Canadian thing because because um, some of the references they use and the way they say things, I can relate to. Because you know, when I'm when I was younger, we'd hang out with our, you know the gang, and we were awful. And I don't know, I don't know how it is in your neighborhood, but you know, it's a miracle that many of us make it through our teens. Our childhood and our teens and our early adulthood, because we have the worst influences and the worst environments to be a better person, or we create the worst environments to be a better person. And that's I'm talking drinking, drugs, and our mentality. You know, like the only thing we ever thought about when I was younger was getting laid and getting drunk. That's it, and fighting, fight, fucking, and fighting. That was our fuck. That was my religion. You know, till <laughs> so I got really hard till. <laughs> Until I uh, faced the music and was like, oh, got to change my tune now. But this is what we all grew up with. I didn't even know. Half of it. 90% of what, what I know, understand now, I had no idea of. Like, my brain was retarded by what I saw and what I learned as a child. So if you grew up in a religious environment, you're retarded by that fucking religion. If you're grown up in a violent society, a environment, you're retarded by that violence. You're, whatever environment you grew up in, you're going to be retarded by it. And I mean that in the, in the kindest sense, meaning in so, for most people it works. You know, they can function in their retarded environment and s seem to think everything's good <laughs> and normal. But the roots are retarded. I've lost track of what I was going to say. But I can relate to these, these guys because they speak my language. You know, my neighborhood it sounds exactly like their neighborhood and I grew up, we all, you know, people think, you know, it's, it's got to be the hood over here. Trust me, man. There are hoods everywhere. And some environments, you some of the most quietest environments, you know, quietest suburbs can be the most fucking hellish on earth. Because you don't see what's going on behind, behind the scenes. You know, in these uh, urban hoods, you see it because it's out there in the front. I'm telling you, there's so many dark worlds. 
so many of them. I mean, I have seen them all. Well, I don't know if I've seen them all, but I'm pretty sure I have seen most of them. In my, in my, uh, in, uh, in my, I'm, there sh I'm sure there's a sure shit, there's a hell of a lot worse out there that people have seen, but what they've seen. But I'm, in my world, in my life, I've seen it all. To me, for me. And I don't need to see anymore. There's a hell of a lot more, but I've seen enough. I mean, when you reach that point, you know you've had enough. You know, there's, there's not a fucking thing on this world that I need anymore except to pay my bills. That's it. You know, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the base of everything and everyone that we all come down to that. That's at the end of the day, we have to pay our bills, but it's how you live your life while paying your bills that matters. You know, and I, I don't need much. I've never needed much. I mean, in, uh, I, I was saying earlier in another video that I'm a simple man. You know, Leonard Skinner's song, uh, Simple Man, that's my creed. For I mean, I'm not a religious man, but I'm a simple man. I don't need much. I don't, I don't need makeup. I don't need fashion. I don't need, I don't even need a fucking phone. I hate fucking phones. I don't need anything except pleasant environments you know quiet pleasant environments and right now i have a you know i'm cool with my cats in my uh, northern uh, you know uh crib and i'm fine here but <sighs> believe me i can't even <laughs> begin to <laughs> explain what's going on in my brain every time i fart in my brain my brain farts because I, I i lose track of where i'm going as an age no one really smiles that much and i probably should have known it by the way that you lie because i don't even like me that much but it red flags time to accept that and you ain't good enough to get my text back i know what's good for me you're a death trap and i'll be yeah, dead nice. before i ever take you back welcome to the end wall the best you'll ever get wall i'm not yours you don't know me no more heart emojis get it through your head Just calling to say fuck you. <laughs> and I hope you read my note. Cause baby, it isn't me, it's you. It's you. Welcome to the end. Whoa, the best you'll ever get. Whoa, I'm not yours. You don't know me. No more heart emojis. Get it through your head. Whoa, I wish you were dead. Whoa, Oh, it's just some fucking cat that just fucked up. Okay. Okie dokie, let's, uh, let's get rid of that. Let's uh, stop that from going any further. Okay. Oops. There we go. Okay, I'm going to just say this. Um, I like it. it. It didn't hit me hard like the other two songs that he just recently received, uh, released, but um, it, it's a good song. These guys... Tom and his uh, crew are multi-talented, and their uh, their ability to cross genres effortless. I mean effortless. I mean this this is a perfect example of a uh, you know like a you know it's like a it reminds me of a a '90s song, you know, like a happy like a aha by uh, whatever. You know, it's it's got that kind of you know you know the messages. I love the message, but it's, uh, it's, it's, um, I like it. I like all those songs, to tell you the truth. Uh, I'm not, you know, hard rap isn't my, uh, genre per se, but I like Bruce and I love, uh, I love his, uh, bars. They're great. And, uh, he, he's, you know, that's what I, you know, 20 years ago or 30 years ago when I first heard Eminem's song, Couldn't End My Closet, I was like, I was moved by it. I was I was in the strip club. I was like sitting there wasted out of mind. I just finished bartending at my bar, left it, and it was too wind up wound up to to uh, go home. So I went to the strip joint that was right beside my place at the time. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was ripped. I was loaded. I was running a hard night of serving thousands of people alcohol and the fucking uh, the video lottery machines. Uh, Oh, yeah, that was a. I've had many jobs. That was a, it was a very 
entertaining job to say the least. But anyways, I'm in the the strip joint Alfonso's on Grand Boulevard in, uh, in Pierre Fon, West Island, Montreal. And it's where I lived at that time in an apartment complex with a side bar. And I just come home from work from a bar downtown Montreal called Miles, which I bartended. Anyways, I uh, I was um, sitting in the bar and just cleaning out my closet came on and just cunt with a huge uh, patch. <laughs> what did they call it? Burks. This one's a real one. <laughs> I've never seen such a... In today's day, I mean, that's, those are far and few between, but it was a huge patch of black hair. <laughs> yeah, I could have seen such a patch. She was hot. Though. She was gorgeous. And, uh, <laughs> she was quite proud of, proud of that patch. Oh, my God, getting lost in that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be crude or crass, but... Well, anyways, that's where I heard the song for the first time. And I just, I just listened to the bars and the way he was talking about uh, his mother and his, uh, just the anger and the fucking hate. I just was so, I thought it was just so raw. And it was like, wow, this is, and this is 20 years later, another manifestation of uh, what Eminem instilled in young minds. I mean, MGK is another guy that clearly, without, Eminem, he would never have come to this point. And I would say the same thing about Tom. Yeah, if he had never listened to Eminem, he would never come up the same, because some of his, you know, his uh, raps are real fierce, like close, uh, uh, clean up the closet, and he has that same intensity. And they, NF is another one that really has that way of generating that hate. A few others, you know, uh, what's his name there? Um, um, uh, what's the one that ma married J Lo that I forget? The, what was his name? There? The big guy in the, in the rap world. I can't remember his name. His first song was hard, and it, yeah, yeah, I think it was a Led Zeppelin riff in it or something like that. I can't remember, can't remember his name, but it was hard. And then everything else after that was sort of sort of say it was just crap. But his initial one was hard, and it was it had that bite. Same thing with Kanye. His first song was, you know, it had a lot of bite and fight in it. The rest is crap. He's, I've never seen somebody more deluded in my life than this guy. He thinks he's... <laughs> I don't want to start knocking his crew or his... his uh, but my God, that is as far as you can get in reality. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody around him isn't helping matters. They're all... Oh, yes, Kanye. Yes, it's like this. Yes, yes, yes. That's what happens. You, you get people thinking that everything they think is right by appeasing their needs and their wants. You know, that's how fucks like Donald Trump rises. Because he walks over people and people just let it happen. It's, it's how the rise of Hitler came. He's turning a blind eye. It's, uh, what's his name? Eli Weasel said that... Uh, I don't know if it was Eli Weasel or someone else said that... Uh, you, if you see something wrong, you got if you don't if you don't do something, it's it's not going to go away. It's going to it's going to it's going to come back again and again and again and worse and worse and worse. You cannot let things slide in your own life. You let things slide. Look what happened. You think in what's happening in the U.S. with the way they let things slide with the NRA and look at what look what happened now. You know, or they let things slide with the you, the politicians. You know, who are bought and paid for by uh, big pharma. Big farmer literally was running the country, all literally on our knees, you know, waiting for this. Uh, I'm not. I couldn't give a fuck. But you know, I, there's so much desperation out there to get a vaccine, and at the same time, <sighs> oh, I've lost track. It's a mess out there. Thank you, Tom, Nova, and Brandon for what you're bringing forth because I love it. I really do.